Jeff and his family had just moved into a new neighbourhood. His dad had gotten a promotion at work and they thought it would be best to live in one of those fancy neighbourhoods. Jeff and his brother Louis couldn't complain though. A new, better house. What was not to love? As they were getting unpacked, one of the neighbours came by. Hello, she said. I am Barbara. I live across the street from you. Well, I just wanted to introduce myself and to introduce my son. She turns around and calls her son over. Billy, these are our new neighbours. Billy said hi and ran back to play in his yard. Well, said Jess's mum. I am Margaret and this is my husband Peter and my two sons, Jeff and Louie. They each introduced themselves and then Barbara invited them to her son's birthday party. Jeff and his brother were about to object when their mother said that they would love to. When Jeff and his family were done packing, Jeff went up to his mum. Mum, why did you invite us to some kid's party? If you haven't noticed, I'm not some dumb kid. Jeff, said his mother, we just moved here. We, 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 show, we should show that we wanted to spend time with our neighbours. Now, we're going to that party and that's final. Jeff started to talk but stopped himself, knowing that he couldn't do anything. Whatever his mum said something, it was final. He walked up to his room and plopped down on his bed. He sat there looking at the ceiling and suddenly he got a weird feeling. Not so much a pain, but a weird feeling. He dismissed it as just some random feeling. Then he heard his mother call down to him and to get his stuff. He walked down to get it. The next day, Jeff, Jeff walked down the stairs to get breakfast and got ready for school. As he sat there eating his breakfast, he once again got that feeling, but this time it was stronger. It gave him a slight tugging pain, but he once again dismissed it. As he and Louie finished breakfast, they walked down to the bus stop. They sat there waiting for the bus, then all of a sudden, some kid on a skateboard jumped over to them, only on, on inches above their laps. They both jumped back in surprise. Hey, what the hell? The kid landed and turned back to them. He kicked the skateboard up and caught it with his hands. The, kim, the kid seemed to be about 12, one year younger than Jeff. He wears an aeropostal shirt and ripped blue jeans. Well, 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 look like we got some new meat. Suddenly two other kids appeared. One was super skinny and the other one was huge. Well, since you're new here, I'd like to introduce ourselves. Over there is Keith. Jeff and Louie looked over at the skinny kid. He had a dopey face that we, that you would expect a, a sidekick to have. And he's Troy. They looked over at the fat kid. I'd talk about a tub of lard. This kid looked like he hadn't exercised since he was crawling. And I, said the first kid, I'm Randy. Now, for all the kids in this neighbourhood, there's a small price for the bus fare if you catch my drift. Louis stood up, ready to punch the lights out of the kid's eyes, when one of his friends pulled a knife on him. I had hoped you would be more cooperative. But it seems you must do this the hard way. The kids walked up to Louis and took his wallet out of his pocket. Jeff got that feeling again. Now it was truly strong, a burning sensation. He stood up, but Louis just stood him to sit down. Jeff ignored him and walked up to the kid. Listen here, you little punk. Give, my, give back my bro's wallet or else. Randy put the wallet in his pocket and pulled out his own knife. Oh, and what will you do? Just as he finished his sentence, Jeff popped in the kid's nose in. As Randy reached for his face, Jeff grabbed the kid's wrist and broke it. Randy screamed and Jeff grabbed the knife from his hand. Troy and Keith rushed Jeff. 
but Jeff was too quick. He threw Randy to the ground. Keith lashed out at him, but Jeff ducked and stabbed him in the arm. Keith dropped his knife and fell to the ground, screaming. Tori rushed at him too, but Jeff didn't need the knife. He just punched Troy, Troy straight in the stomach and Troy went down. As he fell, he puked all over. Lee could do nothing but look at him like in amazement at Jeff. Jeff, how did you do that? That was all he said. They saw the bus coming and need to be blamed for the whole thing. So they started running as fast as they could. As they ran, they looked back and saw the bus driver rushing over to Randy and the others. As Jeff and Lee made it to school, they didn't dare tell what happened. All they did was sit and listen. Just Lee thought of just Lee just thought of what as his brother of that as his brother beating up a few kids. But Jeff knew it was more. It was something scary. As he got that feeling, he felt how powerful it was. The urge just to hurt someone. He didn't like how it sounded, but he couldn't feel. He couldn't help feeling happy. He felt that strange feeling go away, and stay away for the entire day of school. Even as he walked home due to the whole thing near the bus stop and how and how now he probably wouldn't be taking the bus anymore. He felt happy. When he got home his parents asked him how his day was and he said in a somewhat obvious voice, It's a wonderful day. The next morning he heard a knock at his front door. He walked down to find two police officers at the door, his mother looking back at him with an angry look. Jeff, these officers tell me that you attacked three kids, that it wasn't regular fighting, that they were stabbed. Stabbed, son. Jeff's gaze fell to the floor, showing his mother that it was true. Mum, they were the ones who pulled the knives on me and Louie. Son, said one of the cops, we found three kids, two stabbed, and one having a bruise on his stomach. And we have witnesses proving that you fled the scene. Now, what does that tell us? Jeff knew that it was no use. He could say, he could say him and Lee had be ta- been ta- attacked, but then there was no proof of, of, was not them who attacked first. They couldn't say that they weren't be- fleeing, because truth be told they were, so Jeff couldn't defend himself or Lee. Son, call down your brother. Jeff couldn't do it, since it was the, it was him who beat up all the kids. Sir, it it was me. I was the one who beat up the kids. Lee tried to hold me back, but he couldn't stop me. The cop looked at his partner. And they both nod. Well, looks like a year in ju- in juvie. Wait, Lee says Lee. They all look up to see him holding a knife. The officers pull their guns and lock him on Lee. It was me. I beat up those little punks. I th- have the mark marks to prove it. He lifted up his sleeves to reveal cuts and bruises as if he was in a struggle. Son. Just put the knife down, said the officer. Lee held up the knife and dropped it to the ground. He put his hands up and walked over to the cops. No, Lee, it was me. I did it. Jeff had tears running down his face. Huh? Purbro, trying to take the blame for what I did. Well, take me away. The police led Lee out to the patrol car. Lee, tell them it was me. Tell them I was the one who beat up those kids. Jeff's mother put her hands on his shoulders. Jeff, please, you don't have to lie. We know it was Lee. You can't stop. Jeff watched helplessly as the cop car sped off with Lee inside. A few minutes later, Jeff's dad pulled into the driveway, seeing Jeff's face and knew there was something wrong. 
Son, son, what is it? Jeff couldn't answer. His vocal cords were strained from crying. Instead, Jeff's mother walked his father inside to break the bad news to Jeff, to him as Jeff wept in the driveway. Half an hour, half an hour or so, Jeff walked. Jeff walked back into the house, seeing that his parents were both shocked, sad, and disappointed. He couldn't look at them. He couldn't see how they thought Lou. He couldn't see how they thought of Lou when it was his fault. He just went to sleep, trying to for, trying to get the whole thing off his mind. Two days went by, and no word from Lou at JDC. No friends to hang out with. Nothing but sadness and guilt. That is until Saturday when Jeff was woke up by his mother a, a, with a happy, sunshiny face. Jeff, it's the day, she said as she opened the curtains and let the light flood into his room. Uh, what, what's the day? Jeff asked Jeff as he stirs awake. Why, it's Billy's birthday. He was now fully awake. Mum, you're joking, right? You don't expect me to go to some kid's party after all. There was a long pause. Jeff, we both know what happened. I think this party could be the thing that brightens up the past days. Now, get dressed. Jeff's mother walked out of the room and downstairs to get herself ready. He fought to himself now. He fought himself to get up. He picked out a random shirt a pair, and a pair of jeans and walked downstairs. He saw his mother and father all dressed up. His mother in a dress and his father in a suit. He thought why they would wear such fancy clothes to a kid's party. Son, is that all you're wearing? said Jeff's mum. Better than wearing too much, he said. His mother pushed his mother pushed down the feeling to yell at him and to hide it with a smile. Now Jeff, we we may be overdressed, but this is how you but this is how you go if you want to make an impression, said his father. Jeff grunted and went back up to his room. I don't have fancy clothes, he yelled downstairs. Just pick out something, called his mother. He looked around his closet for he looked around his closet for what he could call fancy. He found a pair of black dress pants pair of black dress pants as he had for special occasions and an undershirt. He couldn't find a shirt to go with it though. He looked around and only found striped and patterned shirts, which oh, none of which go with the dress pants. Finally he found a white hoodie and put it on. You're wearing that, they both said. His mother looked at her watch. Oh, no time to change. Let's just go. She said as she herded Jeff and his father at the door. They crossed the street over to Barbara and Billy's house. They knocked on the door and at it appeared that Barbara, just like his parents, were way overdressed. As they walked inside, all Jeff could see were adults. No kids. The kids are out in the yard, Jeff. Why, how about you go and meet some of them, said Barbara. Jeff walked outside to a yard full of kids. They were running around in red car cowboy, cowboy costumes and shooting each other with plastic guns. He might as well be, be standing in, toys, in a Toys R Us. Suddenly, I came up to him and handed him a toy gun and a hat. Hey, wanna play? He said. Ah, uh, no kid, I'm too old for this stuff. The kid looked at him with a pup, weird puppy dog face. Poise, the kid said. Fine, said Jeff. He put on the hat and started, pretend, and started to pretend to shit at the kids. At first he thought it was totally ridiculous, 
but they only started to actually have fun. It might have not been super cool, but it was the first time he had done something that took his mind off Lee. So, so he played with the kids for a while until he heard a noise, a weird rolling noise, then it hit him. Randy, Troy and Keith all jumped over the fence on their skateboard. Jeff dropped the fake gun and ripped off the hat. Randy looked at Jeff with a burning hatred. Hello, Jeff, is it? He said, we have some unfinished business. Jeff saw his bruised nose. I think we're even. I beat the crap out of you and you get my brother sent to JDC. Randy got an angry look in his eyes. Oh no, I don't go for even. I go for winning. You may have kicked our asses that one day, but not today. As he said that as he said that Randy rushed at Jeff, they both fell to the ground. Randy punched Jeff in the nose and Jeff grabbed him by the ears and headbutted him. Jeff pushed Randy off him and both rose to their feet. Kids were screaming and parents were running out of the house. Troy and Keith both pulled guns from their pockets. No one interrupts or guts will fly. They said Randy pulled a knife on Jeff Jeff and stabbed him and stabbed it into his shoulder. Jeff screamed and fell to his knees. Randy started kicking him in the face. After three kicks, Jeff grabbed his foot and twist and twisted it, causing Randy to fall to the ground. Jeff stood up and walked towards the back door. Troy grabbed him. Need some help? He picks Jeff up by the back call and throws him through the patio door. As if Jeff as Jeff tries to stand, he is kicked to the ground. Randy repeatedly starts kicking Jeff until he coughs up blood. Come on, Jeff, fight me. He picks Jeff up and throws him to into the kitchen. Randy sees a bottle of vodka on the counter and smashes the glass over Jeff's head. Fight! He throws Jeff back into the living room. Come on, Jeff, look at me. Jeff glances up, his face riddled with blood. I was the one who got your brother sent to JDC. And now you're just going to sit there and let him rot there for the whole year? You should be ashamed. Jeff starts to get up. Oh, finally you stand and fight. Jeff is now to his feet, blood and vodka on his face. Once again. Once again he gets that strange feeling, the one in which he hasn't felt for a while. Fin finally he's up, says Randy as he runs at Jeff. That's when it happened. Something inside Jeff snaps. His psyche is destroyed. All rational thinking is gone. All that he can do is kill. He grabs Randy and Pyle drives him into the ground. He gets on top of him and punches him straight in the heart. The punch causes Randy's heart to stop. Randy gasps for breath. Jeff hammers down on him. Punch after punch, blood gushes from Randy's body until he takes one final breath and dies. Everyone is looking at Jeff now. His parents, the crying kids, even Troy and Keith. Although they easily break from their gaze and point their guns at Jeff. Jeff sees the guns trained on him and runs for the stairs. As he runs, Troy and Keith let out fire on him, each shot missing. Jeff runs up the stairs. He hears Troy and Keith follow behind him. As they let out their final rounds of bullet, Jeff ducks into the bathroom. He grabs the towel rack and rips it off the wall. Jeff and Keith race in. Knives ready. Troy swings his knife at Jeff. He backs away and bangs the towel rack into Troy's face. Troy goes down hard and now all that is left is Keith. He is more agile than Troy though. He ducks when Jeff swings the towel rack and he drops the knife and grabbed Jeff by the neck. He pushed him against the wall. A thing of bleach fell down on top of him from the shelf from the top shelf. It burned both of them and they started to scream. Jeff, wet, Jeff wiped off, the, off his eyes as best as he could. He pulled back the tile rack and swung it into Keith's head.
He lay there, bleeding to death. Le uh, he laid an enormous smile. What's so funny? asked Jeff. Keith pulled out a lighter and switched it on. What's funny? he said. Is that you're covered in bleach and alcohol. Jeff's eyes widened as Keith threw the lighter at him. As soon as he... As soon as the flame made contact with him, the lights ignited the alcohol and vodka. While the alcohol burned him, the bleach bleached his skin. Jeff let out a terrible screech as he caught fire. He tried to roll out the fire, but it was no use. The alcohol had made him a walking inferno. As he ran down the hall, as he ran down the hall, and fell down the stairs. Everyone started screaming as he saw Jeff, now a man on fire, dropped to the ground, nearly dead. The last thing Jeff saw was his mother and the, the other parents trying to exhaust the flames. That's when he passed out. When Jeff woke up, he had a cast wrapped around his face. He couldn't see anything, but he felt a cast on his sh but he felt a cast on his shoulder and stitches were all over his body. He tried to stand up, but realised there was some tube in his arm. And then he tried to get up and fell out. Then a nurse rushed in. I don't think you can get out of bed just yet, she said as she pulled him back into bed and reinserted the tube. Jeff sat there with no vision, no idea what his of his surroundings were. Finally, after hours, he heard his mother. Honey, are you okay? Je she asked. Jeff couldn't answer, though. His face was covered. He was unable to speak. Okay, honey, I have great news. After all the witnesses told the police that Randy confessed of trying to attack you, they decided to let Louie go. This made Jeff almost bolt up. Stopping halfway, remembering the tube coming out of his arm. He'll be out by tomorrow, and then you two will be able to be back together again. Jeff, Jeff's mother hugs Jeff and, sit, and says her goodbyes. The next couple of weeks were those where Jeff was visited by his family, and then came the day when his bandages were to be removed. His family were all there to see it, what he would look like. As the doctors unwrapped the bandages from Jeff's face, everyone was on their edge of their seats, waiting until the last bandage, holding the cover of his face, was almost removed. Let's hope for the best, said the doctor. He quickly pulls the cloth, letting the rest of, the, letting the rest fall from Jeff's face. Jeff's mother screams at the side of his face. Louie and Je Jeff's dad stare, stare awestruck at his face. What? What's happened to my face? Jeff said. He rushed out of bed and ran to the bathroom. He looked in the mirror and saw the, co and saw the cause of distress. His face. It, it's horrible. His lips were burnt to a deep shade of red. His face was turned into pure white colour into a pure white colour. His hair singed from brown to black. He slowly put his hand to his face. I sort of had a leathery feel to it. He he looked back at his family and then at the mirror. Jeff, said Louis, it's not that bad. Not that bad, said Jeff. It's perfect. <laughs> His family were equally surprised. Jeff started laughing uncontrollably. His parents noticed that his left eye and hand were twitching. Uh, Jeff, are you okay? Okay? I've never felt more happy. <laughs> Look at me. This face goes perfectly with me. He couldn't stop laughing. He stroked his face, feeling it, looking in the mirror. What caused this? Well, you may recall that that when Jeff was fighting Randy, something happened in his mind. His sanity snapped. Now, what? Now he was left as a cr crazy killing machine. That is, his parents didn't know. Doctor, said Jeff's mum, is my son all right? You know, in the head. 
Oh yes, this behaviour is typical for patients who have taken a large amount of painkillers. If his behaviour doesn't change in a few weeks, bring him back here. We'll give him a psychological test. Oh, thank you, Doctor. Jeff's mother went over to Jeff. Jeff, sweetie, it's it's time to go. Jeff looked away from the, the, the mirror. His face still formed into a crazy smile. Okay, mommy. <laughs> his mother took him by the shoulder and took him to get his clothes. This is w this is what came in. This is what came in," said the lady at the desk. Jeff's mum looked down to see the black dress pants and white hoodie her son wore. Now, now they had. Now they were cleaned of blood and now stitched together. Jeff's mum led him into the room and made him put on the clothes. When they left, not knowing that, that then they left, not knowing that this was their final day of life. Later that night, Jeff's mum woke to a sound coming from the bathroom. It sounded as if someone was crying. She slowly walked over to see what it was. Then she looked in the bathroom and saw her uh, a horrendous sight. Jeff had taken a knife and carved a smile into his cheeks. Jeff, what are you doing? asked his mother. Jeff looked over at his mother. I couldn't keep smiling, Mommy. It hurt after a while. Now I can smile forever. Jeff's mother looked at his eyes. Notice his eyes ringed in black. Jeff, your your eyes. His eyes were seemingly never closed. They were seemingly never closing. I couldn't see my face. I got tired and my eyes were starting to close. I burned out the eyelids so I could forever see myself. My new face. Jeff's mother slowly started to back away, seeing that her son was going insane. What's wrong, Mommy? Aren't I beautiful? Yes, son, uh, she said. Yes, you are. L let, let me go get Daddy so he can see your face. She ran into the room and shook Jeff's dad from his sleep. Honey, get the gun. We. She stopped as she saw Jeff in the doorway. Holding a knife. Mommy, you lied. That's the last thing they heard as Jeff rushes them. Jeff rushes them with a the knife, gutting both of them. His brother Lee woke up, startled by some noise. He didn't hear anything else, so he just shut his eyes and tried to go back to sleep. Uh, as he was on the border of slumber, he got the strangest feeling that someone was watching him. He looked up. Before Jeff's hand covered his mouth, he slowly raised the knife, to, ready to plunge into Lee. Lee thrashed there as he was trying to escape Jeff's grip. Shh, Jeff said. Just go to sleep. <laughs>